So hi everyone, my name is Shivam Bohra. I am a third year computer science engineering student from Dehradun. I love solving problems and I also love to teach. Welcome to our channel, Learn Competitive Programming with Codeshare. So if you are interested in competitive programming and want to learn and master data structures and algorithms, then this is a one-stop destination for you. Here we post weekly problem explanations, conceptual videos on various programming paradigms and also conduct live problem solving sessions. So before we actually get started, here's a reminder for you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already yet. So welcome to this course in which we are going to solve some extremely basic problems for absolute beginners. Now the prerequisite for this particular course is the fundamentals of programming and some basic knowledge of C++. So if you want to learn that, then we do have a separate course on it. The link is given in the description. So let's get started. So now we are on to this problem called add natural numbers. So the problem statement says that you are given a number n, find the sum of all the numbers from 1 to n. So this is the exact same problem that we did in the programming series. Now we'll understand why we, why we are doing this again in a few minutes. So the input is simply a number n. The output is simply the sum of first n natural numbers or numbers from 1 to n, right? And so this is the constraint. This is a very important data for this particular problem. We'll understand why this constraint is so important when we'll write the code for this. So this is the sample input, which is 4. And if input is 4, then it means that the sum of first four natural numbers, the sum of first four natural numbers, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is nothing but 10. So this means that the sum of first four natural numbers is 10. Hence, the output would be 10. Similarly, the sum of first eight, eight natural numbers, the sum of first eight natural numbers is 36. Hence, the output would be 36 for this particular case. So let's write code for this. So firstly, I'll create a variable n to store the input. Then I'll create another variable sum to store the sum and I'll initialize it by zero. Because if I don't initialize it by zero, it would be initialized by any random value, right? And this would give us wrong answer, right? So I'll initialize, initialize it by zero. Then I'll use a loop which starts from 1 and which goes till n. Right. So i starts from 1 and goes till n. So after this, I'll write sum equals to sum plus i. So what this line would do, for the first time this loop will run, it would store 0 plus 1. Because initially sum is 0. So the first time this would run, it would store 0 plus 1. 1 because i is initially 1. The next time th this would run, it would store 1 because now sum has become 1. 0 plus 1 is 1. So now this time sum has become 1, right? So this time it would store 1 plus i would also be incremented. i would also be incremented. So it is this time i would become 2. So next time it would store 1 plus 2, right? So here we can see that this is the sum of one number or, or numbers up to one and this is the sum of numbers up to two right so the next time this would run it would store uh, or the next time this would run the value of sum is one plus two the value of sum is one plus two right and the value of i has incremented to three so this time it would store one plus two plus three right and this is the sum of first three natural numbers right so this sum would store the sum of first n natural numbers now, if you want a detailed explanation for this code, then you can simply refer the code which is in the loops video or which is in the problem solving video series. I'll simply put the link in the description so you can simply refer that. And after this, I'll simply print the sum. So I'll simply write C out sum. So let's give a custom input. So let's give two because the because the sum of first two natural numbers is 1 plus 2, which is 3. So we can easily verify this. So the output is 3. 
and if I give 3, then this time it would give us 1 plus 2 plus 3, which is 6. So this time the output is 6. So let's submit the code and see whether we'll get the correct answer or not. So here we can see that we got the wrong answer. Now the reason why we got this wrong answer is that this int data type int has a range. It has a range of numbers which it can store. It cannot store an infinitely large number or, or an extremely large number. Now for this particular question, here we can see that this n, this n is up to this n could be out to 10 to the power 9. Now 10 to, 10 to the power 9 is an extremely large number, right? And also if n is extremely large, then the sum of n numbers would be much more larger than this n itself, right? Then the sum would be much more larger than the n itself, right? So what I have to do is I have to write long, long int before this sum. Because what this would do is, this would simply increase the range of numbers which this variable sum can store. So now if I, now if I run this program, or if I submit this program, then this time this sum is capable of storing much more larger numbers, right? And if I submit this program, then let's see whether I'll get the correct answer or not. So, here we can see that we got the correct answer. Now for this particular compiler, this value 10 to the power 9 for n is in the range of this int. For this particular compiler, GCC 6.3, this value 10 to the power 9 is in the range of int data type, right? This value is in the range of int data type. But there is a possibility that for some other compiler of C++, there is a possibility that this value 10 to the power 9 is not in the range of int, right? Hence, we should also use long long int instead of int for n, right? Because for some compiler, this value for int could be up to 10 to the power 5, right? So we should use long long int. And we should also use long long int for all the cases in which this variable is either up to 10 to the power 5 or greater, right? Here it is 10 to the power 9. So we should definitely use long, long int for n, right? So let's just submit the code. So here we got the correct answer. So now we have this problem called highest divisor. So again, the problem link is in the description. First, try it on your own. Then you may see the solution. So the problem statement says that you are given an integer n find the largest number between 1 and 10 inclusive which divides n. So this basically means that we simply have to find the largest number between 1 and 10 which divides n in which both 1 and 10 are inclusive which means that we, we can take them both right. So the input is simply a single integer n and the output would be a single integer which is simply our answer the largest number which divides n between 1 and 10. This is the constraint that n could be as small as 2 and it could be as big as 1000. Hence, we can use a simple int for this n, right? So after this, this is our first uh, example that if our input is 24, then in that case, all the numbers which divide divides 24 are these numbers, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. Out of these, 12 and 24 are greater than 10. Hence, these are the numbers which are less than 10 and also which divides 24. Out of these numbers, 8 is the largest. Hence, 8 would be the answer for this particular case, right? 8 is the largest factor less than or equal to 10 which divides 24. Similarly for 91, the factors of 91 are 1, 7, 13 and 90, 91 itself. Out of these numbers, 7 is the largest number which is less than or equal to 10. Hence 7 would be the answer for this particular case. So let's write the code for this. So firstly, I'll create a variable n to store an integer. 
then i'll create a a variable ants to store my ants then i'll create a loop to iterate from one till n not n till 10 because this loop uh, would simply store the largest count or the, the the largest number which divides n and this range could be from 1 to 10 hence my loop would start from 1 and up to 10 then i'll check if i not i if my number is divisible by i or not if my number is divisible by any of these number from 1 to 10 or not so if n mod i equals to equals to 0 if this number is divisible by i or not right if it, it is divisible by i then I'll, i shall simply assign ants equals to i right because if i is able to divide this n completely then i would be stored inside my ants right so every time i increases and it is divided it is it is completely dividing this n i will simply store my ants i will simply store i to ants right and after that that i'll simply print ants so let's see how this actually works so let's say if my n is let's say uh, 36 right so what this would do is that this would first start from 1 so is 1 or if is 36 divisible by 1 the answer is yes because uh, 36 mod 1 equals to 0 because on dividing 36 by 1 i'll get remainder 0 so the first time this loop will run ants will get a value of 1 right then i become i becomes 2 i from 1 i became 2 so the second time this loop will run what will happen is is 36 divisible by 2 the answer is yes so ants would be overwritten to 2 right so the value of ants has become 2 now again i will would be incremented for, from 2 to 3 so again this would be incremented from 2 to 2 to 3 so is 36 divisible by 3 the answer is yes hence ants would be replaced by 3 and similarly it would be replaced by a greater number if that number divides this 36 and that number could be as big as 10 right so this would store the largest factor of this n which is either less than or equals to 10 right so let's just submit the code and see whether we'll get the correct answer or not so here we can see that we got the correct answer 